Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. We are here today on our Mindset and Motivation Monday, where my goal for you is to begin to be able to become inspired in a new way. And what I mean by that is this, is that motivation is great. There's no doubt about it. It allows us to get up and maybe at least for a couple minutes or a couple hours, get into the work that we know that we need to do in order to move forward in our life. But inspiration is a little bit different. Inspiration is looking at the bigger picture. It's understanding that motivation is great for the few minutes or few hours that you can push through with your willpower, but what is it that inspires you to go on and lead a greater life? And by that, I mean this. It's wherever you are right now, it's being able to up-level that. So it's looking at your relationships and saying, where is it right now that I'm able to improve in my relationships, whether it be with your parents, your siblings, your friends, your coworkers, or your partner, your spouse. I had an amazing conversation uh, not too far back, just about a week or so, with Terry Real. Hopefully, you tuned into that conversations with Cabral. But what I did was I actually spoke with him about beginning to look at you and your partner as something that's different from just you and that other person, from two separate entities as one unit, one relationship. Relationship. So what is good for each one of you is good for the relationship. And it's starting to look at life in a much bigger picture saying, okay, things are good now, or maybe they need to be improved. That's okay as well. But how can I make them even better? And we need to look at that with our career or whatever our passion is as well. It's like, what is that thing in life? Could be a hobby, right? Passion project, could be community service, could be your career. But what is it that is allowing you to feel like the work that you're doing, the hobby you're pursuing, the project that inspires you to give back in some greater way that provides you meaning in your life, but also gives out a lot to others in need. So again, like you might say, well, I love art or I love dance. Well, whatever you're doing in terms of art or dance or music or uh, an arts-based creative project, that brings a lot of other people joy as well. When I think about all the different people that I know, and I know musicians and authors, and these are all people that put out creativity. They put out work into the world and other people get to benefit from it, but so do they. They get to do something every waking day of their life that they truly enjoy. And I don't want to forget too, and I never want you to believe that life is all about your work. It's not. It's absolutely not. But work can be a great part of that overall picture. So I might be a doctor by day, but I'm also someone that's leading a team, that's trying to inspire a team as well. But that's just part of my life. I'm also, I want to be a great husband to my wife. I also want to be a great father to my two young girls. I want to be a good son to my parent, a good brother to my siblings, a good friends to my friends, right? A good friend to my friends. So we have to look look at it in different ways. And sometimes we fall behind a little bit in that area. And I believe that oftentimes we begin to fall behind because we don't actually see ourselves improving or taking things to the next level in that that particular area. And that's what I want to talk with you about today. Because sometimes we can say the right words, right? We can start to create the goals that we want to have, but we don't actually really believe. And so what we do is we let those slide. And I I've definitely done that myself. I'll definitely share some examples with you, but we have to understand this is that sometimes, you know, we want something, but we put it off. And I'm just trying to think like, have you done anything in your life like that before as well? Have you put off getting that certification, going back to school, getting the degree? Have you put off, you know, trying to meet that right person or trying to make things right with, uh, again, a friend, a coworker, sibling, et cetera? You know, have you put off trying to deepen your spirituality? Have you put off trying to improve your overall financial situation? What are the things that you put off? 
So I would love you to think about that just for a moment, okay? So just for a moment, think about, I know that you have some goal inside of you, most of us do, that you've put off simply because you don't actually think, like deep down, you don't actually think that it would ever come true. So think of one of those. You'd love to have this, except you don't actually believe it will come true. That's what I want to talk about here today, because, and this is really important, you don't need to believe right away. This is something that I figured out over the years. So for let me just give you my biggest example. This is like my biggest, um, we'll just call it like vision board based moment, although it was never on a vision board for me. 19 years old, I'm sitting in a doctor's office of a doctor that is, we'll call them an alternative doctor, right? This is someone that I moved to from no longer looking at conventional medicine to fix all the different diseases that I had, right? So I got a referral to this alternative doctor. And this doctor had all sorts of different reading material in the waiting room. And I'm reading all this material as I'm waiting for my appointments. It talked about allergies. It talked about food sensitivities. It talked about how certain foods or inflammation can lead to fatigue, like all these different things. I had never heard about this before in my life. So think about that. Like think about hearing a topic, reading about a topic that you've never knew existed, but it's always been out there, but you never knew existed. Like in my world, growing up as a kid in Medford, Massachusetts, I had a worldview of what I believed the world to be. That's what I believed it to be up until, you know, 17, 18 years old or so, I get sick. All of a sudden, through different avenues that I went down trying to explore how I could get better, all of a sudden I figure out, oh, there are food sensitivities, there's gut overgrowth, there's overdoing it in life, <laughs> like all those different things. I Meaning like maybe you shouldn't simultaneously be playing, you know, doing three sports during high school, studying for your SATs, trying to get good grades, uh, you know, be in relationships, hang out with your friends, work a job, uh, do martial arts in the evening, like no one ever said like that might be too much. Right. And so, you know, and the truth is this again, like we all have to go through these things. I know my story isn't unique. The way that I learned is obviously sometimes through doing things the wrong way. But all of a sudden, then I find out, oh, there is information on this topic. I had no idea. Again, I didn't know that this existed. Well, I'm sitting there in that waiting room and I said, this is remarkable. It really is. I remember going there, multiple appointments, probably once a month I would go and look at my new lab reports and I would learn all these different things about hormones and stress hormones. And I could remember seeing like at a 19 year old kid, I've got low cortisol, I've low testosterone, I've low DHEA, I, I feel low. And so do all my, my hormones show that I've got low calcium, magnesium, low sodium, potassium, low zinc. I'm low on everything because my body's wiped out. And this is just such a great education. So although I don't feel well and it's not a quick fix, I realize there might be a way out of this. And I start to envision myself sitting in that waiting room saying, wouldn't it be remarkable one day, maybe one day, if I were to be able to open up a wellness center just like this? And I didn't realize it at the time. I'm just saying that. But I mean, again, 19 year old kid. I'm an undergrad at the time, you know, didn't know anybody that was a doctor. Certainly didn't know anybody that studied natural health. That's for sure. And just through a series of events, not really keeping that in the forefront of my mind, but just saying like, Hey, wouldn't that be amazing? Didn't know it, but what 15 years later or so, maybe not quite 15 years, I opened my own wellness-based, functional medicine-based practice, not only like that, but actually I would say to even that next level that included Ayurvedic-based practices and treatments in there, a personal training-based center, uh, nutritionists on staff, a full-fledged uh, nutritional supplement protocols, I mean, functional medicine diagnostics, you name it, like the whole, the whole works. And yet at that time, I had no idea how that would ever occur. I didn't even know how it would occur for the next eight years. It was wasn't until I met my mentor that she said, you can do this. Not only can you do this, you should do this. I didn't even ask for permission. She said, you should be doing this. And so, yeah, it's nice for someone to give us a little bit of a boost. But before that, what do you need to do? Here's what you need to do is you need to stop just saying that you can't because you don't know how or that's for other people, but not someone like you. 
I could have said the same exact thing. I have no, you know, I really have no unique qualities that another human does not have that they wouldn't be able to achieve something that meant something to them. I'm giving you an example just of something that means something to me. But we all have things that mean something to us in some way. And again, it might be relationship. It might be financial. It might be your passion project. It could be uh, overall spirituality. It could be weight loss. It could be your health-based issue that you were dealing with. And it's really important to understand that the way that we get started on this is never to figure it out. I want you, this is the best way because I think sometimes... It's frustrating for a lot of individuals, and I I totally understand this, is that we're supposed to just basically say, hey, this is what we want. We just are going to believe it. We're going to put it up there in the vision board, and we're going to feel ourselves in the presence of that, right? We're going to feel like it's already become true, that we're already living in that reality. And it is a great formula. There's no doubt about that, right? And then you have to release it, just saying like the need, you just release it, and you're living in that. But but a lot of people aren't able to get there because it seems like a fairy tale. And if inside of your subconscious you're saying, yeah, but that's, that's just a fairy tale, then it isn't going to become true because you aren't one with it, right? Your subconscious needs to believe it's already happened, right? So how do you get there? Well, the first step is this, and this is what not a lot of people share with you. And I want to share this with you because I'll use it for any big idea, right? So you know, again, I'm, I'm content. I'm content in life. I'm happy. I'm very fortunate. I'm grateful uh, without a doubt, like all of those things. And I always remain, I have this perspective that just says, listen, you were so bad before, whatever you think is bad right now. It's good. Like life is good. You, You know, things are good. And again, we all, there's ebbs and flows to life. There's no doubt about it. However, I still love to dream big. I still love dreaming big about many, many different things in life. But I'll tell you this, some of the things are big and I just say, I, I don't know, like, I don't know how I would ever, again, fill in the blank, achieve this. And if you're doing that, if you have a goal like that, here's what I want you to do. This is what I personally do as well. I don't all of a sudden try to force my subconscious to believe it's already happened because I can't get there yet. I just can't bridge that gap. So here's what I do. I start to just simply use the phrase, what if, or what would it be like? So I want you to throw that out. And that's what I, because I go back to what I did way back when I was 19 years old. And I said, what would it be like if I was able to open up a wellness center like this? What would it feel like if I were to open up a wellness center like this? What would it look like? What would it feel like? What energy would it have? What would I put in it? And I would just start to live in that moment. And I would actually just start to have fun with it. I have a journal right here on my desk. And inside of this journal, this is just a moleskin journal, and I carry it around in my bag. And what I'll do is I could just diagram out, literally I just diagram out what that wellness center would look like. And before I had a wellness center, I also had a nutrition and fitness studio. And and I had to do the same thing for that. I just started to diagram it out, different things. Where would I put the equipment? It'd be like if you wanted to purchase a house. Well, start to draw out that house. Start to look online. What would that house look like? Start to collect images. Go through magazines. Just say, what if, what if it were possible? What if I was able to do this? What would it look like? So now you're not telling your, you're not telling your subconscious, telling your mind, Hey, we've already done it because you might not be there yet. You might not be ready for that yet. But what you can do is begin to imagine an imagination. Now there's no fighting against that. Cause you're not saying, Oh, we can definitely achieve this. You're just saying, Hey, I just want to pretend. I just want to live in that moment for a minute. But pretending is actually what it's all about. Because you need to use, I don't know if you caught that, a few of those key words that I gave you. What does it look like? You need to start using your senses, right? So what does it look like to live in that dream home of yours? What does it feel like? Okay, look and feel are different. Feeling is a feeling you get. You can close your eyes for that feeling. It might be a sense of accomplishment. It might be a sense of pride. It might be a sense of love. It might be a sense of warmth. There is a feeling that goes along with it. Okay, so what does it look like? That's where the furniture goes or from me for my wellness center. This is where my office goes. This is where the exam table goes. Like I literally laid it all out. And I would, I would love do that. Love doing this part of the process because I'm more of a visual based person. And so then I would say, okay, what do I feel like? Well, the feeling of the sense of accomplishment, that would be so amazing that I'm now able to do and give back what was given to me. It's uh, a no better feeling. Okay. Now, 
I have, I have the look down. I have the feel down. I can start to go into the different senses as well. Can't exactly do the taste, but I can certainly do the smell and the aromatherapy. And for you, it might be like, well, I want a house um, off the street, away from the street with all pine trees around and you smell the fresh pine, and, you know, whatever it might be. Start to get, again, more of those senses in there. What would you hear? For me, it was just that running water inside of the functional medicine uh, practice that I had. And it was basically, I had this beautiful, 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 big copper bowl, uh, that I got from overseas when I was in India and I put water in it and I laid uh, lotus basically flowers across the top. Something that I saw actually, it wasn't in India, it was in Sri Lanka at an uh, Ayurvedic clinic that I was at. And I mimicked that and behind it, I put the water sound. It was this serene, uh, hallway that you walk down to go to your different treatment rooms. And so I absolutely love that, you know, as well, but that was just part of the process. So what I'm asking you to do right now is think of one goal, not a million goals. I need you to focus on only one because it's hard enough getting your mind to believe in one. You can accomplish them all, but let's focus on one. So what's that one thing again, use it for a relationship. Use it for body transformation. We work with a lot of people in our practice on body transformation. Let's say you want to lose 50 pounds. Well, okay, great. So you don't have to, you, know, you might have tried this a dozen times, and I know that it's frustrating, but I want you to think to yourself, what would it feel like to lose that 50 pounds? Again, you don't have to believe yet. We're suspending disbelief. What would it feel like? What would you look like? Right? What would it look like to others if you're looking if you're looking at from outside of yourself as well? And I want you to start to go through that as well. All right. And again, use this for any part of your life. But what we can do is we can begin to use imagination. And I don't know if you've already caught this from my previous uh, Mindset and Motivation Mondays as well. But what we're doing is we're actually reinforcing more of what we want. Our mind is actually focusing now on images, smells, tastes, sounds, etc., that our brain is going to lock onto. So now it's saying, oh, okay, this is something that's important to us. Let's look for things that might be able to bring this into reality without you exactly trying. You're just enjoying it. You're almost feeling grateful that you get to have these great feelings. It's taking you out of maybe not such a good place right now. And your brain's saying, well, if this is what we want, how do we make this happen? And it doesn't mean that you get the answer today. That's not what it means or even next week, but it begins to allow you to look at life in a different way. So now opportunities may begin to present themselves. The house isn't just given to you typically, sometimes, but not typically. You don't automatically just lose the 50 pounds. The wellness center doesn't just open on its own. What I had to do was go through all the different processes in order to be able to open up that wellness center. There was a little bit of a gap between when I sat in that waiting room at 19 years old and I opened my uh, first location around 26 or 27 years old. And then I opened up my next location five years later. Yes, that's correct. So again, there's spans of time that come between those. And that's why I'm saying if it's a big goal, maybe it doesn't happen right away. But the nice thing is you begin to work towards that. I was already happy and on my way before I was able to open the first location, the second location, etc. And I began to change my mind before I even got well. And guess what? I probably would not have gotten well, overcome the dozen different diagnosed diseases I was given. I wouldn't have been able to overcome all of those if I hadn't already began to work on my mind and think about, hey, what would life be like with more energy? What would life be like without brain fog? What about being able to swallow without having swollen glands? What about being able to digest food without getting bloating or cramping, right? I began to just look through these things because then I would point to it at points in my life where it was coming true. Oh, I just had a meal and I don't have any digestive issues. Huh, I don't have a headache this afternoon. That's a great thing. It didn't take me three hours to fall asleep last night. Look at that. I'm on my way. And sure, I'd have ups and downs and I'd have relapses, but I could then begin to focus on the more of it was that I wanted because some of those things were starting to come true. So I would, of course, do more of it. And that's really what we need to look at is that it's not always possible to believe that you can achieve something that you've never had before. Now you can, that's the crazy thing. You absolutely can achieve it, but it's difficult for your conscious mind to get there. It's challenging. It really is. So what do we need to do? Let's bridge the gap. That's all that I'm asking you and have a little fun with it. Give yourself 20 minutes 
of free time. You deserve 20 minutes of free time. I love being able to do this in the morning. I love being able to do it sometimes at lunch and then sometimes uh, when my kids are in bed as well. But oftentimes I wake up on the weekend and it's kind of like I don't have work that day. I'm already up before my family. I don't even need to get like showered ready for the day right away if I don't want to. I can actually go upstairs. I can start to um, journal and think about and visualize and just enjoy the morning, just enjoy the quiet time of going through the different exercises of, huh, what would that look like? What would that sound like? What would that smell like, right? How would I feel? And I can just have fun with the process. I'm telling you, there's absolutely no downside to exercises like this. And I think you'll find this, that the more you begin to do these exercises, the more you begin to dream, the more you do believe, right? Because you say, well, you know what? That's not so wild because I'm looking through these books. I'm looking online. I'm finding the images. I'm finding the people. They've done it. Well, how did they do it? Oh, look at their background story. It's not that much different than mine. Maybe I could do it too. You don't totally believe yet, but you're moving in that direction. The more you dream, the more you begin to believe. It is absolutely worth it. And I do hope that you're able to take some of this advice here today. You begin to live that overall happier and healthy lifestyle that you've been searching for. So thank you so much. And of course, if today's show was helpful, please do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. Thank you so much for tuning into today's show. And I have something exciting to share with you. Every quarter, just like every single natural health method and modality has taught, we do a functional medicine detox. We do a seasonal detox. So whether you're studying Ayurvedic medicine, bioregulatory medicine, orthomolecular, any of the natural health modalities, you learn that the body needs to always be going through a subtractive process in order to maintain health. That means we need to take out the toxins, take out the bad and rest the body for a period of time without always adding more, adding more, adding more. So what we do is we actually blend ancient Ayurvedic principles with state-of-the-art orthomolecular and functional medicine. And that is with our quarterly functional medicine detox. Every single quarter, every 12 weeks with the seasons, we have thousands of people from around the world join us for this functional medicine detox. I've been doing this now for over a decade in my private practice. And I can tell you this, it is the number one thing that I do for myself to work on that aging based process and everyone in our private practice. And that is because it looks at your body from a holistic standpoint. It is a whole body reset. It doesn't say, Oh, go work on autoimmune diseases, go work on blood sugar. No, it actually works on the body from a systemic level. It's working on balancing healthy levels of hormones, healthy levels of inflammation, healthy levels of estrogen dominance or healthy levels of blood sugar levels. And what it's doing is it's actually going in and scavenging all sorts of bacteria and things that should not be there in your body during that period of rest. And again, it's very scientifically proven and by the book to increase what's called autophagy. It's this cleaning process of the body. It actually is so profound. In 2016, I wrote about this in my my book, it won the Nobel Prize in medicine, and that's in oncology and cancer-based work through this process of specific fasting, which we use in this functional medicine detox. So I could go on and on. If you don't know anything about a functional medicine detox, I've actually created a completely free course for you, and that's at equa.life, that's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash detox dash course. And this week, if you purchase a functional medicine detox and join us April 5th, now you could do yours before or after. That's okay. But we'll be doing it the week of April 5th. And this is our spring detox. Anyone that purchases a functional medicine detox over at Equal Life, we are going to give you a complimentary bottle of our gluten and dairy support. This is a specific enzyme that can be used with uh, not just gluten and wheat-based meals or dairy to help you digest those particular products better, but also used with beans and other vegan-based 
plant-based proteins. It's phenomenal at helping to digest those as well. So this is completely free, a $39.95 value, yours free with any purchase of our 7, 14, or 21-day detox. For anyone, if this is your first functional medicine detox and there are health issues that you do want to work on or you're looking to lose weight the healthy way, I can't recommend it enough that 21-day detox to start. It can be absolutely life-changing. I look forward to joining you myself April 5th. And of course, while supplies last, grab your free gluten and dairy support enzyme at equi.life. Take care, everyone.